Hi there, welcome to the Upcycle Design Lab. My name's Cindy and I craft using recycled and repurposed materials. If you're new here, I hope you'll stick around and check out some of my other upcycling tutorials. And if you like what you see, you can check the subscribe button below any of my videos to become a subscriber. Also, if you'd like to be notified when I upload new videos, be sure to check the bell icon as well. So today I have a really simple project using some recycled materials and a couple of power tools. Most specifically, we're going to be using a pop rivet gun. And they've always been sort of mysterious tools to me, but it turns out that they're pretty simple to use and they come in a lot of price ranges. So you can certainly find a cheap one if you want to experiment and decide whether you like this tool or not. It might be something that you want to add to your tool arsenal. So as I mentioned, this is a very simple project, but you do need a few power tools. So I have my hand drill uh, here. I've also got some needle nose pliers. And this tool is called a center punch. You don't have to use it, but it just makes uh, your, it easier. It marks the holes where you're going to drill, and it makes it uh, so that the drill doesn't slip around as much. So I, uh, they're really cheap. They're three, four, five bucks. Uh, I recommend having this in your toolkit as well. And then, of course, we're going to be using the pop rivet gun. Now, this gun was probably about $14, and it came with 100 rivets, so it's definitely on the cheaper end. But it still has uh, four different tips for different sized rivets. And I'm going to be using the smallest rivets for this project. So I've got the little um, nut in here to use the smallest one. One thing I will mention, uh, the little bit that I've learned about this uh, gun is that the larger the rivets that you're using, the harder it is to pump. So this smallest rivet is about the easiest one to put in and it just takes a couple pumps and not a ton of pressure with this particular tool. The other thing is that the rivet gun is slightly, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's sort of counterintuitive I think because you're, you're pumping it and you feel like something's gonna sort of shoot out this end. But what it really does as you pump it is it holds the piece in so that it can compress the rivet to hold your pieces of metal together. Anyway, I will show you that step when we get there, but just to mention the few things that I have learned about the rivet gun is that you do, you want to use eye protection just because there are, uh, there's the potential of pieces flying off. And uh, like I said, you can get them very inexpensively if you just want to test them out and see if you like using this tool. So I'm going to be making uh, what I've decided to call pop or bottle cap beads and they're so you need two bottle caps for each bead and one pull tab and they don't have to match but I have matching ones here for mine. So I've got my two bottle caps and my pull tab and I'm going to be using my needle nose pliers and I just want to kind of flatten out the tabs, or uh, what am I trying to say? I want to flatten out the bottle cap edge. So I'm going to take my needle nose pliers and just pull the rippled edge sort of back out. And once I've gotten all the way around, I can try to grab it and bend it back toward the center, toward it to flatten it out. And you should be able to get a fairly uniform look when you do this. You don't have to be gentle. It's not going to be totally flat. You're going to have still a bump here, but you do want the edge of the bottle cap to have sort of a flat lip on it. I kind of curl mine up and then I go back and flatten out the edge with the flat part of the needle nose plier. 
So your piece is going to look like this. It's got a little bit of a crown on it. It looks a little more like a top hat when you're done. So I'll go ahead and quickly do the second one and then we'll be ready to drill some holes. For this next step, I'm going to be using, I need, you need a little block of wood and the center punch. And I'm just going to decide where I want the hole here. So I kind of want it at the top. And I'm going to put it on the little lip that I've bent out, right above my star here. So you're just going to push down with steady pressure until you hear it pop. And then you might not be able to see it, but there is a little indentation that I'm going to put the drill bit in when I'm ready. So let me mark the other one here. I'm going to mark it in the same place. And then using the same block of wood, I'm going to go ahead and use my uh, cordless drill. I have a 3 16th, uh, no, 3 32nd size drill bit in here because that's the size of the prop rivets that I'm going to be using. So I'm just going to drill a hole right where I've punched my little center punch. So you can see my hole there. And there's my second hole. So a couple things about the pop rivets themselves. There are a ton of different kinds that you can get. Uh, they're made from copper, steel, aluminum. They have different top kind of finish heads and things. But the main thing about them is that the most common, from what I can tell, is called a dimpled rounded top uh, rivet. So what happens is this part fits inside the rivet gun and it uh, somehow, <laughs> I don't know exactly how it works, but the magic of it is, is that it deforms this bottom piece to hold your metal pieces together. And then this uh, skinnier part snaps off. So whatever uh, size rivet you're using is this dimension here and you want your hole to be that same size. So I'm gonna kind of make a sandwich here with my three pieces. And this will be the front of the piece. The back is a little bit rougher, so I'm gonna put my pull tab on here sandwiched between the two pieces of bottle cap. And I wanna pull it up. You can see I've hooked it, I guess, you can see I've hooked it through the pull tab part and I want to pull it up so it sticks out a little bit once I get this other piece on here. So I want it like this. You can move this a little bit after the pop rivet's in, but you pretty much want it where you want to make sure it's where you want it when you put it in the gun. Oops, I keep losing it. It's a little hard to hold on to this piece. All right. You want to make sure the gun is all the way open. Mine, I think because it's cheaper, maybe it looks like it's snapped off. It, it looks like it's open, but it actually does open a little farther. I think maybe that's because I bought a really cheap one. I don't know. So you want to make sure that this piece goes all the way in to that little nub part. And once you put some pressure on it, it will hold the pop rivet in. So
I think I've already mentioned that I'm not a professional at using a pop rivet gun. Uh, and I showed you that last bit of video just because apparently one of the problems that you can have with a pop rivet gun is that the pop rivets will slip. They, they, something happens inside here and the pop rivet will not, uh, or the gun won't hold the pop rivet in, which doesn't allow it to compress the pop rivet then. So I had that problem with this gun, and like I said, it's a very inexpensive gun, so I was ready to just replace it. I wasn't sure what was wrong with it, but I decided to look into it a little bit. You know, YouTube is a great source of information, and what I found was a lot of uh, complicated repairs. There's springs in here. You can take the whole thing apart. That was quite intimidating to me. I didn't want to do that, but I did come across a video that showed just adding some oil inside the gun here after you take the little uh, nut piece out. Uh, so I did end up using some of this 3-in-1 oil. I put quite a bit in there, uh, I would say at least five or six drops. And then once you have the oil in there, you want to put your tip back in, or you can do it without it I guess too, but you want to really kind of lube all of the, the uh, parts up that are in here, I guess. So you just pump the gun quite a few times. And I was surprised, I thought this, I thought it was sort of a weird thing that since the rivet was slipping, it seemed like an odd choice to add oil to it, but it did actually seem to work. Now my gun might still be slipping a little bit, but what is supposed to happen is that when you put the rivet in, and you compress the handle, you can start to feel some uh, pressure. And this, once the handle is compressed, it should hold the pop rivet in. So if you're, what I was having happen is once I uh, compressed the handle, my pop rivet was still just sliding right out. So if you have that problem, uh, you might try this uh, oil tip. It did work for me. Uh, sometimes there are other things that can go wrong with your pop rivet gun. So let me show you this whole process again now that my gun is working better. So now that I've got my rivet gun working again, I'm gonna try to show you this with how it's supposed to work and not how it did work the last time with all that slipping around. You should only have to pump it a couple times. I've been doing three here with mine. But you should feel it grab right away. So if it's not, you might want to try the oil trick. All right, so I've got my little sandwich made here. Rivets in all the way up to the, as far as it'll go. I put it in the gun. And I can feel it grabbing. squeeze it all the way so you can see that the tip of the rivet has already uh, deformed a little bit so I'm going to straighten everything up kind of realign it before I do my second I mean you can even take it out if you need to not exactly a recommended way to do it, but I want to kind of realign my little pull tab there. I can feel it grabbing about halfway. And there it goes. So you can see this part is the part that comes out. This is the back of my rivet that has been kind of reshaped to hold the back on and that is the front of the rivet. So I'm going to try and do one more just because this gun has been kind of tricky. I, I have ended up oiling it a couple of different times. You can tell, I don't know if it's supposed to grab right away, but mine isn't grabbing until I get it about here. And then you pump once and then, you know, like I said, it's not a terribly expensive gun, but oiling it has helped, so it may uh, 
lengthen the life of your rivet gun if you have a cheaper one. Uh, anyway, I'm going to keep riveting away and just kind of see how many uh, times I can rivet without having a problem with the gun. So I've done several more of the pop rivets and I'm not seeming to have any trouble with the pop rivet gun now so I have no idea how long it's going to last but uh, once it starts slipping again I'll probably try the oil again. I think the, these tools probably don't last forever but it is good to know that you can do some quick easy repair to them. So the last step for these bottle cap beads is to finish off this raw edge between the, the uh, two bottle caps. And if I knew how to solder, I probably would have tried doing that, but uh, I don't know how to solder. So I'm just going to be using some uh, metallic dimensional paint to fill in the edges here. And it's a really simple process. This paint has a little tip that you can just squeeze some paint out. So I'm just going to go around the edge and try to fill in the gap between the two pieces of bottle cap. So I'll go ahead and let that dry and then I'll have a finished bottle cap bead. 